G'day, welcome to the Tech Math channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is permutations. Permutations, the number of different ways that things can be arranged. This is not to be confused with combinations, uh, which I want to actually address right now. First off, the difference between combinations and permutations. And I'll explain, explain this with an example. Imagine we had 20 people. Okay, 20 people, and I have three seats I'm going to place them in. Now, I, I, I select out of 20 people, I select three people, and one is Raj, another one is Dai, and another one is Tai. So, if I was talking about permutations, where I placed Raj, Dai, and Tai would actually matter, because it would be considered different that Raj would sit here, Dai would sit here, Tai would sit here, as opposed to Dai sitting here, Raj sitting here, Tai sitting here or Thai sitting here, Thai sitting there, and Raj sitting there, that would be considered different arrangements. Whereas if we're talking combinations, arrangement doesn't matter. Out of our 20 people, I've just selected three people and it happens to be these three. And so combinations wouldn't really matter where these three guys sat, as long as they were sitting somewhere. So I hope you get that idea. But in this particular video, we're just going to be considering permutations. So order does matter. So there's four major different types of permutations we're going to be having a look at in this video. We're going to start simply and we're going to work our way up as we go. Alright, so I recommend if you're doing permutations as a topic, you probably will want to have a look at this entire video. So first off, I'm going to start with just examples with these. So how many different ways, what, this, this, type, this is the most simple type of permutation, how many different ways can we arrange four people in a row? So to do this, you might want to consider we have four different positions, okay? So four people, four different positions. And how many different ways could we arrange them? Well, if we consider this first position, we have four different people we could choose to be in here. But once we've placed the person in here, we're left now with only three people for the second position, okay? So now we've placed these two people in, we're now only left with two people, and then we're only left with one person. So when we're talking about how many permutations we have, what we do is we then multiply these through. So 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and if you've had a look at my earlier video, the video I made just before this on factorials, you realise this is 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 24 different arrangements that we could have. So that's the first type of permutation we can have. I'll, I'll tell you what, I will give you an example that you can do. So what about, imagine if I was talking now about uh, what about six people in a row? How many different ways can we arrange six different people in a row? So this is equal to six factorial, which is an extra two positions. So this is six people, five, four, three, two, one, and we multiply these. And that's the simplest way of doing that. If you were to multiply these out, you're going to get 720 different ways. Okay, so I'm going to go through the second type of permutation now that we get, the second most common type, where what we have is say something like, say imagine we had seven books, but we only had three spaces to put them in. Okay, on the bookshelf, there's only space for three books, we have seven books to choose from. How many different arrangements would be possible? So I'm going to draw those three spaces, one, two, three. Now, if you imagine this, from these seven books, we have to choose a book, but there's seven possibilities we could choose from. So after we choose that first book, we now have one less, and we've only got six possibilities to choose from. Then we only have five possibilities to choose from after we've already filled these two positions. And this is the number of arrangements we could have. We would then get these and multiply them. We're not going to multiply the entire factorial because we only have three spaces. So seven times six times five is 210 different arrangements. Okay, now I'm just going to slow down on this one and show you something with this, so just to give you a bit of a hand in case you get these types of questions. So what you might notice with this is that this 7 times 6 times 5 is kind of like 7 factorial, but we're missing the last little part. We're missing this 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 part. Okay, this part. We're missing that. And what you might also realise is, with this, we're only taking the first three spaces because we only have three spaces. So this has led to a rule that if we have n 
number of items and we have this many spaces, the number of different ways they can be arranged is where we have n factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, and pretty much what we're doing is we're saying we're only going to take the first this many spaces. Okay, so what about, I'll give you an example here, what about we have eight cars and we have three spaces to park these cars, alright? How many different ways could this be achieved or arranged? So first off what you're going to do is you're going to probably think, okay, we're going to get eight factorial different ways, but we're only going to take the first three, okay? Because we've only got three spaces. So this is, this, and this is the way I think about it, it's just going to be eight times seven times six, okay? Which is 336 different arrangements. So I actually prefer to think about that that way rather than actually thinking about some rule. The next type of permutations we're going to consider are ones that involve repeats. And I'll give you an example of this. Say I was to write the word puppy down and then I was to ask you how many different ways can we arrange these letters? Now this is not just a simple matter of just arranging five different letters because you're going to notice that <laughs> a couple of the letters are actually the same. Uh, P and P and P. We have three different P's. So we could swap these two P's here and we would end up with the same combination. If we could also swap these P's here and end up with the same combination. It would still say puppy or these two and we'd still say uh, puppy. So how many different ways could we arrange these letters taking into account the repeats? So it's a fairly simple way of doing this but we start out with this just having a look at how many letters in total there are. So there's five letters in total. So if we were just to consider this where they were different, all the letters were different, we would have five factorial different ways of arranging these. Five times four times three times two times one, which is 120 different ways of arranging these. But considering this letter P here, we have this letter P occurring three times. Okay. And this letter P could be arranged how many different times? Well, you might then even try to arrange these, but you might even think, hey, they can be arranged three factorial ways. So when we're trying to figure out how many different ways a letter puppy can be arranged, we start with five factorial, and we divide it by three factorial. Okay, so we start with a number of different letters altogether and the number of repeats and how many ways they could be arranged, and we divide it out. So three factorial is equal to six. 3 times 2 times 1. What we end up with, 120 divided by 6, we have 20 different arrangements. So I hope you get that idea, okay? All you need to do with that is you divide out the, uh, the repeats factorialized. So say for instance, I now consider a different word, I'm going to consider the word mammal. And I'm going to get you, possibly if you want, to try and actually work at how many different ways we can arrange these letters. Uh, now first off, I'm going to start answering this right now. You can pause it and give it a go. But we have six factorial different ways that we could arrange these letters if we don't consider repeats. Six factorial is six times five times four times three times two times one, which is 720. We have two different types of repeats here. We have the uh, M's. The M's, we have three of these. And we have A's, we have two of these. So we're going to divide by... 3 factorial, 2 factorial, okay? So 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1. I'm not going to bother right the times 1 because we all know that's not going to change the, the result. And this one here is 2 times 1, so we're going to times that by 2 as well. So 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12. So how many different ways can we arrange these? 720 divided by 12, we have 60 different ways. So hopefully you're getting that idea, okay? All you need to do is you need to work out the repeats and you factorialise them and divide them through. And it's a nice way of thinking about it. Okay, and it makes sense when you think about it as well. So the last type of question that you're going to get with these is where we are going to consider permutations that you have when you have a circle, okay? So how many different ways, imagine this sort of question, we have four different people but we're trying to arrange them in a circle. How many different ways can we do this? I'll tell you what, I'll draw this circle down here and I'm going to explain the problem that we get with this. And then it'll 
lead to our solution. So imagine our four different people. I'm going to call them A, B, C, D. And we arrange them. But then you're going to notice that we can also arrange these people where we could put A here, B here, C here, D here, or A here, B here, C here, D here, or A here, B here, C here, D here. And you're going to notice that all we're really doing is we're just rotating. It's exactly the same. The arrangement's the same. Now, look, if you were actually saying, hey, no, wait a second, it's not. What you can do is you can just treat this as four factorial. If the exact position these guys sit matters, treat it as four factorial. It's like arranging them in a line. But if all of a sudden you say, hey, wait a second, I actually don't mind because these people counterclockwise or clockwise are sitting relative to each other in the same position, that this, you know, this, the, the rotation can be taken into consideration here, what we need to do is we just have a look and we go, there's one, two, three, four rotations. So what we actually do is we divide it by these number of rotations. Okay, so 4 factorial divided by 4. So 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 4. Well, we're just going to cancel these out. And what we're actually left with is 4 take away 1 factorial. In fact, the way that we work these out, the formula in a circle is n take away 1 factorial. That's the way you work out the number of permutations in a circle, which is going to be 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So what about you? If I was to ask you um, how many different ways could we arrange, uh, what about six people in a circle? Okay, so six people in a circle, six people in a circle, and you're just going to go, okay, six take away one is five factorial, is going to be five times four times three times two times one, which is going to be 120. And so they're the different types of questions you get with these. They're fairly simple and they make really good sense when you think about them. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you found this video informative. Uh, see you next time. Bye.